everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So today is another kind of just a relaxed sort of crafting session, but what I'm going to do is kind of a tutorial to show you how to make this kind of a fun floral sort of flea market style, maybe a little boho journal cover. Um, this is a project for using up fabric scraps. So I've been kind of thinking with these sort of relax and craft with me sessions that we're doing that it's a good opportunity for me to try to use up a bunch of stuff in my studio that I really just need to kind of get through. So um, what I would recommend is if you want to craft along with me, you probably can. Um, I don't know if this will like be a sort of a succinct, you know, if, if you can go as quickly because there will be there will be sewing involved at which point I will be pausing. I'm not going to do the stitching on camera, but I will explain to you exactly what I do as I do each piece. So um, I'll just show you what this journal looks like entirely. So this is very much a crazy quilted kind of fabric project um, for making a soft covered journal. So you'll see there are all different scraps of fabrics that I've used. Um, mostly um, cotton, some silk organza, typically about quilting weight-ish. Some are a little heavier, some are a little thinner. You could use silk scarves for this. You could really use any fabrics. This is some of my rust printed fabric. Um, some of it is from clothing. This was a skirt, so lots of different stuff. Then um, some uh, embroidery from an Indian uh, sari. And then on the front, I've just used this big piece of pink cotton to make a flower and embroidered with um, yarn, kind of some sort of messy, big kind of French knots to make the center of the flower. This is actually yarn. This is some blue mohair, commercial mohair that I hand dyed. And then this is some of my hand spun yarn. Um, it is a, a Corydale wool blend and um, I've spun it, it's just my scraps left over and then I've stitched a leaf here. The other thing that I've done you'll notice that kind of takes me to that flea market kind of feel is um, one way that you can tack a quilt um, down is by using these kind of ties. So I brought a blanket. I have a few of these blankets. I kind of I kind of come across them from time to time and probably you've seen these kind of blankets before at a cottage or at your grandma's house or you know whatever but you see this is how like a lot of these are like polyester 70s fabrics and this is how a lot of um you know women grandmothers mothers um you know probably some men but i think this is primarily a women's work kind of craft historically this is how they would use up a lot of the old clothing from children, a lot of old textiles, a lot of, um, you know, old silk scarves, a lot of dish towels, all sorts of different things. And so as you see, this isn't really traditionally quilted. There is a lot of hand sewing around the edges to do the binding. Um, but then through the back, you see that yarn has been used, just looped through the back and tied at the front. And that's what's actually sort of replacing a binding for this quilt. All of this stitching that you see is done with yarn, but it's just top stitching, it's just the quilt built um, face. It's not through the backing. It's not through the stuffing of the quilt at all. So that is where I was inspired to kind of play a little bit with the same thing on here um, because I, I like um, making quilts that have these kind of fun ties and I thought it would just add nicely to the overall feel of the journal. So I guess we can get started. So give me one second to set this blanket aside. Okay, so the materials that you're going to need will be um, pretty basic. Obviously, you need a sewing machine for this. I would, I mean, unless you just want to use like a ton of fabric glue, by all means, but I don't recommend it, to be honest. So um, what I used is, this is just a piece. I have a huge stack of this. I got it from um, like a Facebook marketplace posting for a ton of cardstock. And I have a ton of this burgundy. So this is just a regular size piece of burgundy cardstock. So the journal size that you're going to make is going to be the traditional sort of eight and a half by 11 or a four, you know, depending on where you live and what your standard paper size is. So just give it a fold and then you could use a bone folder. I'm just using the end of my scissors here to just make that crease nice and, you know, tight. So this is what we're going to start with. This is what this began as. <laughs> then um, I would say from your fabric stash, if you've got pieces, 
just cut them up into different sizes. Um, you can use little crumb pieces too if you want, but I'd recommend nothing a whole lot smaller than this or a square half of that maybe because we're going to be gluing these all down first just with a glue stick actually to just tack it down before we do our stitching. So I've got a bit of shiny costume stretch fabric, lots of cotton, some silk organza. Some of this is from um, clothing and I've um, grabbed a few things that I could use to embellish like that could be a cool leaf. I am using the same kind of pink um, fabric for the flower here. I don't know if I, I might use this piece. I might not depending on how big the flower is. I might even use a second piece. I think for this one, my flower um, on this book, I started with a bit of a bigger piece, but I can't remember. Then I have a bit of scrap yarn. This is some scrap sock yarn, and this is more of my hand spun yarn, just some scrappy kind of leftover. You could, if you're not someone who has hand spun yarn or spins yarn, um, you could use a commercial bulkier yarn. You don't need yarn. You could also use ribbon. You could use strips of fabric. What you're looking to create is just kind of some, you know, interesting bulk around your flower to just kind of bring out that bouquet kind of look to it. Um, then I'd select a couple of fabrics in green shades like this. I'm going to be using those to stitch my leaves um, or my leaf. I, I was thinking of putting a couple leaves on this one, maybe doing it a little differently. Um, and that's what I, I did here. I just used a scrap of green fabric that I stitched a leaf out of. So I think that's pretty much all you're going to need for this project. So that's the list so if you want to stop the video if you want to grab your supplies and sort of work with me you can um, or just watch me as I go and you can probably make one all by yourself so we'll set the prototype aside now um, the way that I began is just not worrying about the embellishment side of this so nothing from the embellishments is needed yet just the fabrics themselves so I'd recommend using a good quality glue stick for this. I use probably something no one else uses, which are these OIC um, glue sticks. My husband works in industrial supply, so he's able to get these for me. I don't know if you can get them in your in your area or not, because um, they come, they don't, I've never seen them in stores before, but that's what I use. I know that um, there's a purple Uhu glue stick that's, that's also good for like, you know, professional permanent crafting, as well as a Scotch Creek glue stick so you could use whatever glue stick that you like keep in mind what we're doing is just tacking it down with this it's not going to be um, what holds the whole journal cover together so don't worry so what I'm doing now is just putting you know a relatively good amount of glue on the back because I do want it to stick like I want it to stick down um, you could use Fabri-Tac for this but I think it would be overkill if you're going to be stitching so then essentially we're just going to take some time here and glue all of this down and I'll show you a little bit. So one thing is I am going over the middle seam. I'm not lining fabric up to here because if you do, you're going to get a ratty seam. If you go over your seam, you put the middle of the fabric there, you're going to get a smooth seam. Then similarly with this, I'll show you. You're just going to have to deal a little bit with the strings from the fabric, um, which can be a pain when you've got glue on your fingers. Um, so this one, when I glue it, I'll show you what I'm going to do here, just so that you understand kind of the concept. And then I'm going to speed through, like I'll speed up the rest of my gluing process here so that you don't have to watch me glue every single bit. So I'm going to just lay it on top of here let it run over the side and go over the edge as much as possible. Now, you don't have to do this on the edge. You can line it up to the edge and have, you know, a bit of fraying on your edges. It doesn't honestly matter as much. See, I did some here, so here's some frayed edge. It looks quite charming, to be honest, but there's what the smooth looks like, and there's what the frayed looks like. So it's just whatever you prefer, right? Um, so, that's that. So what I'll do is I'll stop chatting for now, um, but I will glue all of this on and you can watch me do that in maybe fast motion. And then I will come back to you once it's glued down to talk about the next step.
Okay, so I have um, covered the entire surface, both sides, with fabric. I used some ribbon with sequins here. I used some nice old 70s dress fabric, some plaid. I tried to keep the colors bright with like kind of blue, green, yellow undertones with pops of pink and other little subtle colors. Um, when you choose fabrics for this, I'd say to just try to like you know have some sort of an undertone if you want or you can have really like a lot of matchy matchy fabrics i would say this the undertone of this i would call green um so now what we're going to do is go to the sewing machine um, i will come back after each step the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to zigzag stitch all the way around the four corners to tack down the four corners okay and then i'll come back and show it to you See, so we're back and you'll see I have zigzag stitched all around the edges so um, one thing I can say is my sewing machine doesn't really have a lot of problems handling like a wet glued kind of surface like this um, but if yours does you can let this dry and it will be easier for the sewing machine to handle so now I'm just going to do a bit of trimming so trimming off the long threads from where the um, the thread ends and then any little kind of frayed bits if you want to cut those off or shorten them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually trim any uneven fabric that is kind of hanging off the edge where the fabric was longer than I needed for the um, project. So that's mostly good. Then when you're sewing around the edges, if you want to do um, either a zigzag stitch, you know, relatively close to the edge like I've done, or if you want to do an overlock, you could do that too, which just means um, some machines have an overlock setting so it stitches off the edge. Um, you're definitely going to glue a bunch of threads and things to your fingers like I have here, so don't worry and please ignore my terrible um, fingers right now. <laughs> but anyways, um, so an overlock stitch is basically it's just going to go off the edge you can also do that though with a zigzag stitch just get a little closer to the edge so one side the needle when it's going back and forth is actually going off the edge a little bit and it will do like an overlock stitch um now the next step here again is a sewing step so it's going to involve me leaving and coming back so what i'm going to do this is kind of the free motion quilting crazy quilting kind of part of this whole thing so um where you see the seams coming together i'm going to use just a regular um a regular stitch like a single stitch you can um, bring your length longer if you want to because you don't need little tiny stitches it doesn't matter that you could do either um, and I'm just going to sew along all of the um, you know intersecting areas where the fabric meets I'm gonna I'm gonna tack down the edges of everything um, but I'm gonna let the sewing machine just kind of go so let's say if I start here I'm gonna come down here then I'm gonna let it override on this a bit I'm gonna be careful on these sequins be careful with sequins because they can actually sh um, shut down the timing on your machine they can mess with it so let's say I started here and I was gonna come down here to seal this edge then I came up the ribbon maybe I overlapped the ribbon then I went down here then I'm gonna go oh maybe say down here down here down here and then maybe I want to cross over here and go across like you can basically crazy quilt all over this however you like to the only thing I would say is try to make sure you get each of your seams um, for, for your fabrics down because that means nothing's going to come up later once you've finished one side flip it over and do the exact same thing now you're gonna see where you did your stitching from the other side maybe there's a fabric seam here that met two pieces of fabric you're going to see that seam there um, but that's part of the fun that's part of the nice look of this so like you'll see there's stitching that has nothing to do with this but everything to do with over here right so that's the whole purpose of this is to just we're making something interesting so I'm gonna go do that and I'll come back and show you okay so we are all stitched and we have clean hands <laughs> so now we get to decide what we want to be the inside and the outside so here you see everything was stitched around its its natural edge in some way um, and you can see that there's you know crazy stitches from either side on both sides so now I'm gonna fold the journal in half on its seam again 
where I've already folded it before. And then I think just like this one, I want to kind of focus the flower up on this section. So now I just need to decide, first of all, what's the top and bottom. I've got butterflies here, so I think maybe I want it to go up this way. So I have this as my front option, but I do like that sparkly fabric. I wouldn't want to entirely cover it. So maybe I'd have to think a little about where I want that, or I can flip it around and decide that maybe what I like is the fact there's nothing here really that's that interesting to me. It's not like, it's mostly calmer colors that aren't, you know, extremely interesting. So this might be a good candidate because there's a lot of green, which goes with my flower. The back is quite nice. I like the colors here. Here, and then I get to keep that fun inside that's a little bit more colorful with vintage fabric and stuff. So I think that that's my decision made that I'm going to use this as the front. So now what we need to focus on is creating the flower. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I think I may have used a slightly larger um, piece of pink. This is also a silk. This is cotton. So what I'm going to do is try to create the same kind of flower. I don't know if it'll be the same size. Now, this is the part of things that I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's just, you know, don't get stressed out about it. Um, don't, don't be worried if like, it doesn't feel like it's going to work immediately. It will, it will work. So take your square of fabric, um, then just kind of, you know, in the middle, just kind of poke it here, hold it like that for a second. Um, then you're going to just flip it back up. Okay. So we've got this, you're just holding that center. Then bring your corners down and hold them in the center as well. So I've got one corner, two corner, holding them here, three, bringing it down and four, last corner, bringing it down and holding all of that together like that. And I'm kind of looking at kind of what shape I have right now. You can decide again, you might want to bring a fifth corner down. You might want to make it a little more ruched, a little smaller. Um, which is what I'm going to do. So like I mentioned, this, this fabric's a little smaller than the one that I initially used up here. So this is the size that the flower would be. So I've, I've got all of that ruched together in the back. I'm just pinching at the back, all those, I brought all four corners down once. And then once again, I'll start again to show you. So you have a square, poke it, grab the back. Okay. Bring corner one behind and hold it with your other fabric. Corner two, corner three and then corner four and then you've created another shape that again has corners it's still kind of a square so bring those corners down one two three four and it can be a little unruly to hold all this in the back but you're doing it you're fine okay so then you're going to kind of end up with like this ruchy shape you know you've ruched the back a lot so that's what we want we just want to trap all the corners and all the edge kind of down here um now i'm trying to decide is this a little too small it might be one second i don't want a flower that's super small maybe it's a secondary flower i'll do i'll do it with both um what do i have would this color look nice with this no it's too dark one second Okay, I actually have this big piece here. I want to get a bigger piece of fabric. That one's a little too small for what I want to do. So let's rip. Because I don't have any more of that original cotton that I used. So I'm going to use this very stringy silk here. I just want a little bit of a bigger piece. And then I can decide if I want to do a, a second flower. <laughs> you know. These on the fly tutorials that I'm doing, they, they always get a little bit wild. So here we go. So this one, let me just do a kind of a quick measurement of what I'm using. So this is 10 and a half by inches by um, just a little over 10 and a half inches. So it's pretty square. So again, just grab that center, flip it over and bring your corners into the middle too. Actually, it is a little easier to hold when you've got a bigger piece of fabric. And then again, and then, you know, you don't have to bring all your corners in. What you're trying to do here is just create like a relatively interesting kind of floral shape that you're going to be stitching down. Okay, so here we go. 
I think this is about the size that I'm going to go with, maybe. You know what? I need to do it again. I'm sorry. There's all these strings that are messing me up. This is the struggle portion of the video. Struggle portion. You know, it wouldn't be me if there wasn't a struggle portion. Pinch. Here, let's do it this way and we'll show you again what it looks like, right? It's like one of those little things we used to make for those little paper things that fortune tellers, you know? Okay, and then I'm just going to decide how I want to do this. So corner again, bringing it in. Again. And I might just grab just the one piece of fabric. Like I'm not going to grab the whole corner. Just I'm going to grab the inside of the fold and pull it in. Okay, so... That's more what I want. Just kind of this weird sandwichy kind of looking thing. You get it? Free form, free form style. Now what I'm going to do, okay, I've got all this ruched at the back, right, that I'm holding on to. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to do a line across it to just hold it down so that I've got this smushy bit here that I can, that I can work with, okay? I will be right back and I will show you. Okay, so see what I have here? Literally just a line of stitches, kind of squiggly, it goes right over all that section that I was rooching and holding on to. Okay, so just snip off these extra long pieces of the thread. You don't need those. Okay. Then the side that you rooched, that's actually the side that's going to be facing up. Okay. Now, what we want to do is determine how we would want a flower to be on here. We're going to squish it in a little more, keep rooching it in, and kind of say, hmm, okay, I like that, I don't like that. Now, um, the next stage, basically, is um, you are going to go and, and, like, once you've got it sort of in a flower shape that you like, like, I like that, it's kind of like, looks like a peony, maybe. I do stitches sort of in a circle, just around and around. So like you will stitch around here, keep going, stitch around here, and you're gonna get this natural kind of flowery shape, right? Cause you're making kind of the center of the flower and then it's going to naturally crinkle and crease and you're, these are going to just look like petals like they do here. So before we do anything else, let's just do those rounds of stitches, okay? Um, actually, we can do one other thing. Anything you want to tack down underneath your flower, like you see I've done here, I've got a couple pieces um, of silk organza that I use kind of to be like leaves. What I want to use on this piece in that same way, I think, is um, this piece of lace. I want that up there. And then I have that crochet piece here that I really like um, that I think I want under this edge. So because you're stitching down, you're gonna want those underneath like that, so go ahead and put them in where you like them, okay? So I'm going to go do these circles, make sure I affix these two pieces down, and then we will be on the next step. So after I've sewn that, I'll be right back. Okay, here we are, I'm back. So that didn't take long at all. It was like maybe two minutes. So what you will notice when you are um, doing these circles, okay, when you're stitching it down, Oh, one thing I should have told you ahead of time, make sure you keep your journal open when you're stitching. Don't sew your covers together. Um, so I'm going to have to go back and just uh, tack down this a bit maybe. Um, but anyways, so we've got it on. One thing you'll notice when you're stitching these circles though, is your fabric, it's going to be moving around like this pink fabric. So, you know, just look at it as you're stitching. If, you know, you're going along and you've got this big piece kind of coming way out here, push it in you're like rooching it in pushing it in let those stitches run it over you're not worrying about concentric circles you know see how wiggly my stitches are it's all by design right we want that then I've got a bit of silk threads kind of popping out here I'm just going to snip them off so they're not sticking to my fingers um, so I've tacked this down I've tacked that down on my next go on the sewing machine I'm going to put some stitches here though because I don't want that flopping up and down I want it to just lay down nicely now now this is where we can come in with, if you have it, an art yarn or um, something else you can use. Maybe I'll try to show you because not everyone has art yarn. One minute. Uh, there's another hand spun yarn. Um, okay, something I bet you will have is either seam binding or a fabric strip. Um, now how would that look? That would look actually quite nice. This is an old, um, actually it's an old dress that I 
had a million years ago and um, I don't wear it anymore. So I'm just going to see how wide this is. I think I probably, this is a, like a strap, so I'm just gonna rip it. So I only have half the width. I don't want a super thick, thick fabric because I don't want to make my machine angry at me. So what do I want to use? I really like this. This is just a normal hand spun yarn. It's about a worsted weight. So I want to just kind of, you know, toss it around a little. I think I like it more than I like my, my thicker, fatter hand spun. Then I'm going to um, maybe just like lay this down, okay, and create almost like a ruffle. Okay, so like you're just going back and forth, creating these like kind of little loops, just like a ruffle like that. That would be really cool. And then lay the yarn on top of it. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky with your sewing machine. Um, so there's a few options here. Okay, I'm just going to stitch this on because I'm a determined and patient sewer and I have to stop a lot if any of these loops get up on top of my my foot, I need to pull them back down, lay them down, stitch again. I'm going to probably go through this about 10 times um, in different ways and um, then I'll be happy with it. But there's a couple things you can do. So if your sewing machine has the ability to take your feed dogs down while you're sewing, that's one thing. I think a lot of embroidery machines have that option. A lot of sewing machines do too, I think. I haven't had to do that, but they recommend that if you're doing like anything with shag or sequins, bring your feed dogs down so you can look that up in your manual for your machine. The other thing is um, if you have any kind of wash away interfacing, stabilizer rather, you can lay that right on top, right? And then kind of get an idea where you want to stitch. You'll be able to see through it. It's very see-through. And that will give you that sturdy fabric on top that your needle can poke through without getting, you know, upset being mangled in here. But as you see, I was able to do this. This is some pretty fluffy yarn. So I'm going to go away feeling confident that I can do this and <laughs> hopefully I will have success and I will be back um, and show you what happens. Okay, let's do it. Hey, okay, I'm back. So this has been tacked down. This went another direction. So I sort of started like ruffling it up here and then I noticed like these ribbons wanted to push over they wanted to kind of go over here i'm just going to let them dangle on the edge like that i actually love it i mean i have the option obviously i could have looped them back up and you know stitch them down again and had like a nice kind of um effect that way too but i think i'm just going to let them do their thing like that i really think that's pretty so what um was my experience okay so lots of times i had to stop the machine because this would get looped over top of the um like the part of the foot and it couldn't move forward anymore so i had to do that a few times now the other thing that i did with this one is i came back and sometimes like this is just too long it's too unruly right I'm gonna cut it because I actually want to have a few snipped kind of little ends that you know they they look more like a bouquet kind of like you would have you know curls and ends of like a spray of like you know flowers and maybe like baby's breath and those kind of things so you can leave them loopy like that definitely or you can cut them and then you'll have these little kind of bits here that they're snipped and they look kind of cute like little tassels so I would do a bit of both I'll leave some loops here and then some tasseling around here on the edge I'm going to snip them um and then what I'm doing is just kind of fussing with it to see what's really long is anything quite annoying you know um like these are a little long I, I don't want them too long I don't want them to get hooked on anything you know when someone's using the journal I would want their ring to get caught in it that kind of thing so here we go, we've got some looping and we've got some tassels and it's fun. So let's get rid of these scraps and then we will examine the next step here. So I've already snipped all of the uh, thread edges that I had. So I didn't you know, want them hanging all over. Um, so do that if you haven't already and then you'll just have kind of this nice, uh, this stage, okay? So the next is to decide um, do I want this leaf, right? Because I've, I've got these, I might not really need it, but I'm going to make one. I think I do want one because I love this grass fabric and I just think it'd be very pretty. So what we're going to do is that 
step next. So let's just set the journal aside for a minute. And you're going to need just a little piece of a fabric that's green. Um, this is actually a grass fabric. So then you need enough um, times two, basically, to be able to cut out a leaf. So then we're going to just cut out the shape of a leaf. And a leaf is just, you know, you have a point on each end and then you have rounded sides, right? Think of the shape of an almond or an eye. Um, you don't have to be, you know, an exquisite artist here. There you go. So this is a leaf. This is my leaf. Now what I'm going to do is take it over to the sewing machine. First, I will stitch straight down the middle and then around the edge. And that's it. And I will do that on the journal cover, actually. So I got to decide where I want to lie this. Um, I don't want to destroy all this. So I think what I want to do actually is put it right under like that. So it just sits beside and it still just creates this prettiness. I could also put it over here. That might be kind of cool. Hmm, that's a tough decision. I think I might actually just make it a little bit, a little bit smaller, a little sharper and a little smaller. You know, this is the kind of stuff you can take as much time as you like with. This is where you're really putting kind of the style, the stylized design of what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think I like it best over here. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'll be right back after this is stitched down. So there's the leaf stitched down. Got a little bit of a ripple here, but I actually like it. It kind of gives some shaping. It looks very... The reason I, I said to double up the fabric is you get a, a sort of a quilted feel to it. It's a little puffy. So that is fun. Um, one thing I didn't mention, and I should have probably, um, not a big deal, but if you're making this um, and you wanted a pocket sewn on the inside, do that before you begin any embellishing on the outside. Um, because, you know, obviously I can't stitch a pocket in here now because it would override, you know, this. I mean, maybe I could, to be honest, maybe I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want a pocket anyways. So now we have pretty much the full cover. Now we're on to the embroidery stage of this. Um, so it is so super easy. Um, I'm going to use this same thread that I used for this one actually. And um, I just need to grab a needle. I would recommend like um, a nice sharp needle with a big eye. Um, where did I put my large needle? I use usually like a darning kind of style needle, sharp darning needle. Is there, oh, here it is. I'll hide in my little felted, um, my little felted thing here. So this one, I'm going to use blue and just, you know, pull off a decent long thread because we're going to double it up. We want bulk um, when we're doing this kind of an embroidery. And it's not hard, it's just a very simple kind of embroidery. If you've ever done a French knot before, um, it's kind of like that, except you don't have to stress yourself out about like it being a perfect little circle because we're making a flower. Okay, so where you're going to go is right around this center, the center of the flower. Go on the back here and then just poke through. Um, I push my needle against a hard surface, especially because I'm using silk and it can be a little bit, you know, tough to get through. You kind of have to wrestle your needle through because it's got yarn on it. Um, you might also, I usually keep some pliers handy to pull my needle. There we go. Um, now, on the back here, um, you, I'm just going to tie myself a little knot here. Um, and then later I'll figure out how I want to deal with this. You could stitch another piece of fabric on top of it to just hide the, this, you know, piece of yarn on the back. Um, I don't know what I'll do yet. I could also glue a piece of paper on there. We'll see. So, but for now it's fine as is. I'm not stressed. So then you've got your two strands here. Just wrap them one, two, three, four, five, maybe six times. Then go in a little bit, just, you know, maybe a centimeter away, just a little bit. Um, and then we have to work it back through again, needle back through. Um, so I just have to pull it up close to me. Then you're going to pull, 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 pull. And then you're left with kind of this 
boop here, it's like a giant French knot. Then again, you're gonna go back in, look over here where you would want another one, poke through, tug, one, two, three, four, five, six circles wrapped right around your needle here. And then again, just a centimeter or so away, pop it back through. There we go, two, and then maybe one over here. The other thing you could do too is you could um you could tie your knots on the back and have like strands maybe with beads hanging down so many options just think about the kind of flowers that you like and what the center of that flower looks like and just be creative with it okay center here there we go and this will be the end of this piece of thread or yarn <laughs> but that's okay because I think that's all I'm gonna need you can add more colors you can do as many of these as you want until you're happy with it um, so there we go now I'm just going to tie one and two. Okay, and then hopefully you've got a relatively neat back here. It's not a big deal. But yeah, again, I would maybe lay another piece of fabric down just as you've done the others. You can glue it down and then um, you, you could stitch it down or you could maybe fabric tack that one down because then you're not going to have to stitch, you know, through the outside here. Um, maybe I'll just do that. So I've got some fabric right here. So in this case, just snip these as close as you can, actually. Knots aren't important. The knot is not that important to the work because, you know what, you're using fabric tack and that's gonna make life easier. Please pardon my silly, sad fabric tack bottle. This is like, um, this is lockdown fabric tack. I'm waiting for the stores to open in my region on the 14th of June so I can go buy some more fabric tack. I have a new bottle. This one has a crack in it, so it's like it's having a, the last days of its time here on on my desk. Okay, so nice generous amount of fabric tack and then just plunk it on top and squish it down. And then it will just blend right in with your patchwork. No worries. All good. Okay, so there we go. We have our center of our flowers. Sorry, I think we just, <laughs> I just had to restart the camera for a second there. So anyways, I was just saying, I'm very happy with how this looks. You could also do beading here if you wanted to do some seed beads or little beads. Um, now what we're gonna do though is, those fun flea market kind of antique quilt knots. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to use this nice bright yellow yarn. This is just a standard acrylic yarn. I think it's um, DK weight. Uh, yeah, DK weight. And it was from, I think Lovecrafts. It's just a, it's not a fancy yarn. You could use any cheap yarn, nothing, nothing crazy. So you could use more than one color. Um, you could use embroidery floss, a um, bunch of different colors, you know, you could do whatever you like. It's kind of like making a pom-pom in some ways. So the way that I do this is I want to put one of those little ties sort of like in each of the different colors of the work. So I go through the front with my needle and then pull it through and just go sort of like a little bit further away here. Then 
Um, oops, we would not. No, we don't. Okay, so then just pull, pull, pull. Leave about that much yarn for the first one here so I can show you. See on the back, this is what you're going to see. Just that little stitch. Then at the front, you need enough that you can just tie two knots. So pull both strands through like that. Just a simple knot. One knot. And two knots. There we go. Then just cut the, both sides kind of to your liking, however long you want them. And then go to the next spot you want to put one. So for me, it's right here. Go right back through. Go a centimeter away again. Same as what we were doing with the embroidery. there. So this is a nice and fun little textile art project that's just like you can do it in you know maybe an hour or so. Well I guess we'll see how long this video takes. <laughs> um, we'll see. It doesn't feel like it's taken very long because I um, you know have made now two of these today so it doesn't feel like it's too stressful. I'm actually really happy with this project because it's like the kind of thing that it keeps you interested. You're not just kind of stuck doing the same thing for a long amount of time. And right now for me that feels really great because I am working on a design team project, I'm working on a journal commission project, and so I'm just sort of needing to mix up my time a little bit between um, something just a little inspiring, like new and uh, the things that I need to be doing as well as like I mean they're very inspiring though I shouldn't even say that <laughs> just wait until you see what I'm working on you'll love it I love it and I don't say that to brag about myself I say that to brag about the designer that I that I am lucky enough to work with uh, you'll see okay so um, now back to this folks on the front. I'm doing both sides here. It's probably a little bit confusing. I apologize. So I'm just going to go up here beside the, um, that stitch down piece of lace. I think I have enough for maybe one more tie here. Let's do that. piece of yarn. Oops. Okay. And on the front here, I think one in this green area. And that will be the front, I think, finished. with that and now we go to the back we'll do one through this yellow here. I love this fabric, these little oak leaves on it. I got all of these um, little snippy kind of quilt leftover fabrics at a thrift shop one day and I really liked it. They're really pretty but they're all very little pieces. 
so I'm happy that I can use them for things like this just to use them up because they're so nice it's the same as this shiny fabric all that these were from like dance costumes um, someone had donated um, a bunch of their scraps from making these lovely sparkly dance costumes so I was happy to find those I thought like they are very they'd be very good for like a boho project but I haven't been in a thrift store for like ages but I'm actually fine with it I, I don't even think I want to go thrifting like when they open again I, I don't know maybe maybe not I feel like I have enough stuff you know sometimes you just sort of mentally you're like okay I got enough stuff and ever since I um I've been buying some estate sales and ever since I bought a ton of books and stuff like that I'm, I'm kind of good and I was already really good for other supplies because of course I'm a fiber textile artist already and had been working in those mediums before I got into journaling so um yeah what else do I need on here let me think I'm just gonna look at the overall composition I think I need one up here just to sort of even it out a little bit Maybe just one more toward the bottom and then we'll have a nice kind of spread out collection of these little things I don't know what they're called these little they probably have some kind of a cute name so if you look at the back again um, I think maybe on the, this brown here this brown leafy fabric be the end of that. I'm actually going to just cut this off the needle. It'll be easier for me to tie my knots. Okay. Put my needle back in my... There we go. Okay, so here we go. We have a really fun floral sort of bohemian feeling textile art um, journal cover and I think that happened pretty quick right we got that done and pretty quick I think maybe this video might be about an hour would be one of my little bit longer videos but look what I did today so maybe I am starting to get a bit of my energy back <laughs> <laughs> we can hope um so yeah these will become journals at some point um i am in like journal cover making mode right now i don't know why but i think these are going to be one of my recurring journal themes i love them they feel nice they're beautiful i'm happy with them so thank you so much for joining me on another little making adventure here i hope you had fun and you like this project and if you try it out please tag me on instagram i am studio lou on instagram or on facebook um i'm studio lou there too i have a page um you're welcome to follow along i do post things there um if you're not subscribed to this youtube channel i would love it if you subscribed we're almost at 200 subscribers i'm pretty excited about that um and yeah leave me a comment if you try it out link your blog or whatever and i would love to take a look at what you do and until then thank you so much you can find all my my social media information down below in the description box and I will be back soon hopefully tomorrow with something so take care everyone and have a great weekend